Hello. Hey, Lena, how's things? All good. You can see me and hear me well? Yeah, perfect. You too? All good. Oh, good. Welcome. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. That's okay. Are you getting excited? It's not long. I know. Very excited. A little bit uh, stressed for last minute things that need to be done, but all good. Excited. What, what's the worst thing about getting ready for a tour, though? Is there, like, beyond the excitement, there's got to be some things that really stress you out. The, the thing that's, that really, really stressed me out are actually two things. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. It's just the bureaucracy of things that need to be done instead of things that you want to do, like, like uh, you know, the, all the paperwork that needs to be prepared, visas, consulates, all these like, um, things that are necessary in order to travel to certain countries, of course. However, they are not the easiest to do. And when you don't have enough time to do them uh, at your own pace and you have to do them very last minute, that definitely stresses me out a lot. And of course, um, the actual travel itself is not my favorite. I, I just, I wish teleport was a thing already. <laughs> yeah. Now, now but, uh, yeah, other than that, it's, it's, it's uh, amazing to be able to be in different countries and, and perform in front of new audience and, and share your, your art. That, that part is amazing. You all do it for that. So. Yep. Well, I'm sure the travel will be a little bit different for you than the rest of the band because you're based in Vegas. Yes. Um, I have many, many, many friends in there. Hi to my Vegas friends. Um, nice. Yeah, have so you ever traveled here? I love Las Vegas. How is the travel? Tell me. I don't know anybody that I could ask. So, hey, how is the travel? So I was crazy. I went from, so I live in Brisbane. So uh -huh. I went from Brisbane, you have to go to Sydney. And yeah. then from Sydney to LAX. Mm -hmm. And then I, Instead of going to McCarran, I picked up a car and drove from LA oh, straight that, to Vegas. Oh, not too bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Four hours only. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you're straight off a 14-hour flight, it was a little bit silly, but, you know. Yes, of course. If you do it right <laughs> away, you can imagine. <laughs> I, I wanted to see my friends. They were playing a show that night at House of Blues, and I just wanted to get there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I like that. Yeah. Spont so, spontaneous decisions. That's good. Yeah, so for you it'll be, you know, the same, like McCarran, LAX, LAX, out to here. No, I'm actually flying through Canada. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> now, again, like the band is from Moldova. So for people yeah. that don't know, it's between Romania and the Ukraine. The thing I find interesting is that you, you are essentially a Romanian country, but you mm -hmm. were sort of pushed into a bit of, soviet kind of learnings in your youth but did that pay off having like bilingual skills like knowing hell Russian yeah. And Romanian? yeah hell yeah i would never change it to be honest i i think that that's a big luxury to grow up in a bilingual co uh, country especially when the two languages are so radically different one is a Latin uh, based language and one is Slavic language. I think that's amazing to be able to speak both languages just since you're small. It does definitely prepare you uh, for more in life, more doors are open, more um, understanding of culture. Um, and of course, I feel like the more languages you speak, the easier it is to pick up a new one. So I, I always was passionate about languages. So I did languages in the university growing up uh, later on in life. And, and I find it, I find it awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Now you're out here for the first time and for the first time touring with Cradle of Filth. Correct. Um, were you a fan of their music growing up? I was never a diehard fan. I was always very respectful and very aware of the band. Uh, I remember certain music videos. I uh, never seen them live even, to be honest. Uh, and, and it wasn't by choice. It just never happened that way. There are many, many bands that I absolutely adore that I never seen live, uh, unfortunately, yet. Um, but everybody tells me that it is a treat 
to see them play live and that they are absolutely amazing people. So I can't wait to meet everybody and to actually share the stage with such a legendary band. Awesome. And you're going to be coming on the cycle for your latest album, Time, which is a concept mm -hmm. album. So I've got to ask, 12 tracks on the album, is it to signify the 12 hands on the clock? Actually, that was a uh, an accident. That was not uh, planned specifically for that meaning. But thank you. That's a great idea. <laughs> That's actually a very good point. I, it was actually yeah. the first place I went. <laughs> really? That's yeah. amazing. I, I don't think uh, that anybody in the band thought about it that way. Just... I don't know, as as music lovers, we always uh, listen to other bands and compare um, certain, um, uh, you know, artwork, certain like way the, the other bands do things just to just to be aware of what's going on out there, you know, and and of course, we could have done less songs because there's like a, a minimum a um, LP should be like the a minimum time for a full length album to, to be considered a full length album and not just an EP. But that's like nine songs, give or take, you know, yeah. so we always thought that that's quite little, even 10 is quite little, even though. Majority of our songs are very long, four minutes and a half, five minutes and a half. Um, it was just a pure decision of how much material we are satisfied with at the moment where we were recording, you know, that's all. So for you, what is the best thing about time and what's the worst thing about time? As 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 the thing itself, not the album. The oh, okay. Time. I was just about to ask. Time. Yes. So, of course, I would say that the worst part about time is how fast it flies by. And um, you would catch me either say it out loud or think about it at least every other day that, oh, I wish I had more time, right? And that is a good and a bad thing because normally if the fly if the time flies by that is a good sign of you know you you're having a good time or everything is going right in your life and you're not struggling as much right cuz cuz when the time drags and when the time is going passing by slow i feel like that's normally when you have to do chores <laughs> or any other unpleasant things like th that you don't like to do and that's when the time goes very slow so, but the, I guess the bad part about it is just because of like the amount of things that I want to accomplish. And uh, some of them, some of those things are personal things, of course, you know, connected to my personal life and, you know, my, my family and some other things are connected to the band and my career. And I do wish like I, I'm home I, I'm home only for five days and it feels like I just arrived yesterday and, and there's so much to do. And I feel like I never stop, even though I do try to stop and at least watch a movie to decompress and, and, you know, spend some time on my couch. <laughs> so a lot of people don't know that you initially were a hair and makeup artist that you know, yes. weren't a singer. What was that? Was there a definitive moment? Speaking of time, was there a moment in time where you went, it's time to change. No, actually, um, the choice to become a singer for me became serious uh, during and straight after the very first performance I ever had with Infected Rain, which was in the beginning of August of 2008. And before that, we started rehearsing around autumn, late autumn 2007. But it was, I felt like that was for fun. And I felt like that was not very serious because I was very serious about my career being in, in the what it was already, you know, continuing being better at my job and maybe having my own place and, you know, and just continuing um, in that direction with hair and makeup. Uh, art, you know, I always loved it. Always. I, I started uh, working in that industry when I was very young, too young to even like legally work, I guess. But I was a certified hairdresser, finished the this, this school for it. And, and I had an insane amount of practice um, before, during and after school. And I was hired to work at a beauty salon right away based on my results. So I loved it. I really put a lot of 
uh, you know, um, time, effort, and 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 um, energy into it. But when I was asked to sing for fun uh, by my friends, um, you know, I as I said, I didn't take it that serious up until one of them told me to like try and look into like some vocal lessons because uh, they thought that I could, you know, um, perfect and learn this skill uh, because, you know, I never I never actually knew anything about music. I never learned anything about music, never had a, a, a music lesson or a vocal lesson in my life up to that. I believe I was 23 at the time or almost 23 or almost 24. I don't remember now. I have to do the math, but um, I did actually think that that was a great idea. And even if it is for fun, it's something nice to do. And I loved the way it felt to be in um symbiosis with my own voice and to deliver emotion and to control something that I never knew how to control. I mean, I'm still learning how to, you know, but I was very curious about it. So I started learning, but still it wasn't until the first show that I knew that, oh my God, I have to do everything possible in my power to continue doing this for as long as I physically can. So that was the the point in time. <laughs> in time. Now, in time. You've now been joined by Alice on bass. So you're yes. now officially the the heavy metal ABBA. So Thank you. I love to call us the same. <laughs> well, when are we going to get a heavy metal ABBA cover? Just to make I it know official? we totally should do that. We totally should do that. That's a great yeah. idea. <laughs> Even if you have it recorded as like an intro or an outro for your live I know, show. Right? It'll be just That's a amazing. great idea, I think. I should bring into the I should bring that to the table. Yeah, just it's gotta be done. <laughs> Heavy metal ABBA. It's gotta be done. And I love ABBA so much. I've done certain songs of ABBA, uh, by the way, with this very first vocal teacher that I've had uh in the University of Music. Uh she would bring certain ideas of certain songs that she wanted me to uh to sing and perfect and, and study. And there was two songs of ABBA, if I remember correctly. So Wow. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. You are an artist in every sense of the word and you carry your art on your skin with your tattoos. Um, what's, what's the most misunderstood thing sometimes you get about having a lot of tattoos? Well, there's still the, the, the prejudice. You can still find countries and or per, uh, people that will think that that's way too much and uh, that will think that the way you look defines who you are. Uh, which, in a way, let's uh, let's be honest. Of course, we we change our look so we look closer to our inner world or closer to what we think we should look or we we um, represent or whatever, right? Yeah. However, I want to remind everybody that tattoos are just uh, things we garnish our body with, just like clothing and, you know, hair color or hair length or hairstyle. And, and yes, it's a more permanent addition to our look. Yeah. However, it's still just an addition. We should not be judgmental and should not judge anybody by the way they look because we don't know what they are going through or where, where they've been or where they are in life. Now, <clears throat> I think um, the one thing that I want to invite people to think about is tattoo, tattoo industry is moving so fast and it's absolutely amazing the level and of the skill of the tattoo artists around the world and tattoos are no longer representing anything negative necessarily or a meaning of a time served in prison or or in military like it used to be because it was very unique and only people that were either in the military or in prison uh had certain tattoos done right because i don't know why i don't know maybe maybe because of the culture of how you know the tattoo industry just started because obviously we all know that tattoos in the first place started in tribes yeah. and 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 that was uh you know so many years ago and now tattoos can and should be worn as 
just purely for the for for their aesthetics as well as the the deep meaning that you want to put behind you know a tattoo i have a lot of friends in the tattoo industry and uh, i've been wearing tattoos uh, my first tattoo since i was 16 i believe and of course many things have changed and they will be changing in the future and maybe you know the next generation or the generation of you know our children or grandchildren will be thinking completely different than the way i think now even you know yeah. so the the time changes allow the time to change people as well don't judge you know yeah exactly and as as an artist and artistic expression as you said it's a it's a reflection of who you want to be seen as as a person and it is absolutely. just a, it's no different than it decorating your house you're just decorating yourself. absolutely yeah yep, yep. thank have you, you have you got any real estate left to cover that you want to put, put a tattoo on um well i do still i'm still working on my uh right uh, leg sleeve at the moment i do have certain ta uh, tattoo ideas for the future that are a maybe uh, because really, I don't have much space left, and I want to use it um, smartly. Yeah, no, that's great. Now, that also comes across in your visual. So, as a as someone who's lucky enough to take photos at the shows that we cover, the visual aspect of a band in twenty twenty four is can be just as important as the music when it comes yeah. to putting the visuals together for Infected Rain. Are you the sort of you know, the leader of the charge there? Actually, no. Um, I do definitely have a big uh, saying in it, especially when it comes to my aesthetics in the band for a specific music video or a show or a, I don't know, a, a unique performance or photo shoot. That I do. I do help uh, my, um, you know, musicians as well. However, when it comes to actual uh, visual representation of the band, the 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 our biggest idea bringer is uh, uh, Vadim, the guitar player. Uh, he is also uh, one of the creator of the bands. Um, with me, we we are the only two left that created the band, and he has very interesting uh, views and ideas when it comes to uh, something new or how to perfect something that we already have when it comes to visuals. He is a very passionate artist um, when it comes to videos, photography, uh, designs. He does all our merchandise. He does, he is the director and editor of all of our music videos uh, as of lately, especially. Um, he creates our posters and we fully trust him because he has great taste when it comes to that, so. Excellent. Now, what do you need on tour? What's the one thing you cannot go without when you go on the road? Well, I, I think I'm going to choose uh, my uh, vocal warm-up device that I always, always have to have with me, even if I just rehearse. It's very tiny, little, straw-like uh, device. It, it is literally to uh, substitute a straw um, there are a few exercises that you could do uh, to warm up uh, a little bit faster and more precise because of how the air flows when we actually do blow through a straw, especially if it's like a tinier straw, there's more muscles involved. And it's it's a, it's a very old technique, to be honest, and it's very uh, popular. You can find it on, on YouTube, on Google. However, my vocal teacher, Melissa Cross, um, uh, taught me these little tricks, uh, especially if you t take a nap during the day and you want to wake up uh, more gently your voice and or you did not have time to do a proper warm up. I need to have that with me. It's it's just um, instead of straws, instead of polluting the planet, I just bought a specific device that um, is like a straw. Yeah. Excellent. Now, literally, it's weeks until we see you. Yeah, um, it's very soon. <laughs> what, what do you want to tell all of your Australian friends before I let you go today? I want to say thank you for the opportunity and for the love because we felt so much positivity uh, in the feedback as soon as we announced this tour. And 
I can't wait to meet you all. I can't wait to hear uh, everything you have to say about our performance after our show. And yeah, I hope that this will be like a tradition that we can do at least every other year. Excellent, Lena. Enjoy your day. Thank you for your Thank time. You. And we Thank look forward so to for seeing day. you in Brisbane. Thank you. Yeah, see you there. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night.